Hello, and welcome to Coding Adventures, episode number two. In the last episode, I worked on a little erosion simulation and got a lot of interesting suggestions on how to try and improve it. I really wanted to experiment with these ideas on larger and more detailed maps, so I of course simply increased the map size and the number of droplets in the simulation, and then pressed run. I couldn't wait forever, so I decided to try the suggestion of converting my erosion code into a compute shader, which would mean that instead of each droplet being simulated one at a time, loads of them could be done in parallel on the GPU. This of course sounds fantastic in theory, but unfortunately I had no idea how to do it. After a bit of searching, however, I came across an article called GPU Ray Tracing in Unity. I'm sure there are more direct ways to learn about compute shaders, but I was kind of curious, so I began reading. The first goal was to draw some spheres, so I began in C-sharp by saying that a sphere has a position, a radius, and a color, and then generated a bunch of those with random properties, and sent that data to a compute shader. The shader's job is then to draw those spheres to a texture, so I first had to tell it to cast a ray out from the camera for each pixel in the texture, and then do an intersection test to find the closest sphere so that its color can be drawn to that pixel. With just these 256 rays that you see here, the result is of course extremely blocky, so I'll scale the texture to about a million pixels instead. To make it a little prettier, I then wanted to add shadows. The way that this works is, say we have a ground plane and a sphere, and then somewhere up here is the light source, and in front is the camera. Now, say one of the rays of the camera hits the ground over here. Before we just draw the ground color to the pixel, let's first check if that point is in shadow. To do this, we cast a ray from that point towards the light source. If it is blocked by an object that is here by the sphere, that tells us that we are indeed in shadow. Of course, in reality, the rays come from the light source, not the camera, but most of them will fly off in other directions and miss the camera, so by doing it in reverse we get to save time because we can just calculate the few rays that do actually hit the camera. Here's my little scene again, this time with shadows. I also made the spheres bob up and down just for the joy of it. The last thing I wanted was reflections, so now when a ray hits something, it should bounce off and keep bouncing until it reaches the max bounce limit that I defined. So the color for this ray should be a combination of this sphere's color, this sphere's color, and the sky color. Okay, now I'll add some simple shading in to make this look a little better, and then I'm just going to scooch the camera over a little so we can see this better, and increase the light bounce limit to 1, and all of a sudden you can now see reflections. If I increase the bounce limit to 2, we can now see reflections in those reflections. At 3, reflections in the reflections of the reflections, and so on. Now, the article I followed does go a lot further than this, so I think it's really worth checking out if you're interested. I'll leave a link in the description. But by this point, I was feeling ready to tackle the task of converting my erosion code to a compute shader. <laughs> Well, it was a bit of a bumpy ride, but once I'd finally verified that it was working, it was time to put its speed to the test. So I set up a 1500 square map with 600,000 simulation iterations, which the old erosion code can crunch in about 43 seconds. Anxious to see if my work would pay off, I pressed run, and just one and a half seconds later, the erosion was complete. So that means that it's now feasible to experiment with larger maps like this one, which of course I'm very happy about. I also converted the height map generation to a compute shader, and got a similarly dramatic increase in speed. Anyway, this video is titled Compute Shaders, so I should probably spare a moment to actually talk about the things. In the old code, I had this loop to sequentially simulate each droplet, but in a compute shader, there is this function here which is called the kernel. I have the code to simulate a single droplet in there, and the shader then runs many of these in parallel. The numThreads attribute lets me specify how many threads should be executed in a group, and when the shader is dispatched from the main thread, I can specify how many total groups I need. So if I want to simulate 100,000 droplets, I could have a group size of 1 and ask for 100,000 groups, or I could have a group size of 1,000 and ask for 100 groups. If I'm honest, I really don't know a thing about GPUs, so I don't know what this actually means, but I have found through trial and error that, in my case, setting the group size to the maximum of 1024 gave me the best results. To pass the original map data to the shader, 
and then get it back afterwards, I need to create a read-write buffer of floats in the shader. In the C-sharp script, the syntax for setting the data looks like so, and for getting it back, like so. If you're interested in learning more about this topic, I'll link to all the resources I used in the description. But for now, that is everything for this coding adventure, so until next time, cheers!